Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 8. Today we're going to be doing my review and breakdown for episode 20. I apologize if my microphone quality is a little bit worse than normal. That is mainly due to the fact that I am away. I literally just got back as soon as The Flash episode started airing. So I'm very much so in a makeshift setup. So I apologize if there is any kind of reverberation or if my voice sounds a little bit weird. I'm using a different microphone as well. But man oh man, do we have to talk about this episode because so much went down. Now this was the season eight finale of The Flash. This is episode 20. We're not going to get a new episode until 2023 so it's going to be quite a while until we get flash content obviously there's going to be teasers there's going to be stuff behind the scenes that we're going to see and that's obviously very exciting and we will be sure to cover it all on the channel however we need to talk about tonight's episode and this is obviously not the end of my flash coverage i will continue to make coverage over that break as well i just wanted to reiterate but for now if you do go on to enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future dc tv videos later this year okay so the episode opens with reverse flash he is back he is smiling it's a direct continuation off of last episode when thorn's face was literally ripped apart and the other thorn came through and so he says you're dead i saw your body that that being barry of course in the previous episode however at this point thorn reveals that the negative forces brought him back because they needed a fourth member of their band and that the balance had been upset so they needed a new avatar of their negative forces and obviously with the removal of the negative speed force that's why they needed thorn and they needed to get rid of the good version of thorn because he wasn't of any use to them at all and that's why he is gone also in this scene it's revealed that the potential killing of iris led to the rebirth of thorn just like as thorn points out the killing of barry's mother led to him becoming you know reverse flash and then barry actually becoming the flash so there is all a kind of cyclical nature to everything that goes down between the two of them and so at this point barry goes completely insane he goes and strikes thorn with like a whole load of lightning that he's got with inside of himself but he isn't powerful enough and it's clear at this point he's going to try and kill thorn at this point excess and impulse show up and they try and come to the rescue to try and stop their dad from going overboard and cecile like the rest of the team confronts barry after this and after thorn has disappeared and basically cecile in this episode is doing the same old cecile thing where she is reading everyone's mind specifically barry's mind and is like i see your emotions i feel your fear and your hatred your pure hatred you want to kill but she doesn't understand it and i feel that's weird because if you saw your partner literally get killed in front of you you're gonna feel that anger you're gonna want to retaliate against the person that's done that so i understand barry's standpoint but i understand cecile's standpoint but i think cecile honestly was like a little out of hand at times just in this scene and especially how intrusive she is with going into everyone's mind like Give them a break for a minute, I feel. And her get up, I don't know what's going on with the V necklace, but it stands out a lot like it's meant to mean something. But yeah, I'm just not a really big fan of Cecile in general right now. I feel like she's becoming way too overpowered than she actually kind of like has deserved to be in terms of like story development. It really doesn't make sense that she's getting all of these upgrades and she's so important all of a sudden. Like it feels a little bit forced and rushed in my opinion but let's move on to the next bit so iris it turns out is in fact alive and damien dark is there with her and he reveals that she's not supposed to be dead and that she's in the time stone and at the point where her body was zapped by lightning that's when she got taken into the time stone basically so she isn't able to fully die and so she still has something important to do and that is why 
she is not dead and she's not supposed to be dead at all and so thank god joe had the time stone and damien duck gave it to him because the time stone absolutely saved iris in this instance and all throughout this episode barry is thinking oh iris is dead this is his main motivation but the rest of the team is sure that somehow iris is still alive they have hope and obviously there's been hints towards that maybe she's alive but barry is adamant no she's dead i need to get revenge and so that's what happens in this episode with barry and reverse flash he wants complete revenge he goes after him and so then we move on we have negative forces and they meet with Reverse Flash, and they explain to him why they want him, and what they're doing, and they actually kind of briefly possess him in order to try and upgrade him to become this all-powerful version of Reverse Flash. But in the meantime, Jay, Garrick, and Joan actually show up at Joe's house, and after some searching, and apparently Jay and Joan have been tracking the particles, they actually find the Time Stone, and at that point you realize oh they're gonna get iris out at some point and she's gonna first reunite with joe and so let's talk about cecile so cecile wants to bring back the positive forces that's revealed in this episode she forces the top to help and the other person from iron heights i forgot her name she's just like a side character i guess and basically cecile is blackmailing them for their powers i feel like again not sure about the motivations and the true intentions of Cecile this season. I really, really am not buying into it right now. And so apparently Bashir, one of the forces, tethered himself to Cecile because of her endless potential. And Cecile ends up using Bashir's mask. And she's overwhelmed, but it's only for an instance. And basically she's able to restore Bashir's powers and restore everyone else's powers. And it's just strange that, like I said, she's just so powerful all of a sudden that she has this endless potential. And although she's losing all of those powers as of right now, and that was a big upgrade because of Bashir tethering himself into her, obviously without her knowing, that made her extremely powerful. And she still has that potential that Bashir was talking about, as we see towards the end of the episode, when she literally thinks of oh i want a coffee and then the coffee flies into her hand like she's a jedi now at this scene i was like okay this is kind of ridiculous like this is pushing it way too far i thought it was far enough before with her gaining all of these new powers and people describing her as this all-powerful meta and now she is somehow a jedi like she's able to think of something and have that thing in her hand and force it towards her that is a little bit too far if you ask me but anyway so the negative forces they tip the scales after what they saw barry doing after armageddon when barry was able to upset the cosmic balance by destroying the negative speed forces avatar obviously sucking the negative speed force out of thorn and so this has led them to do everything. So Barry realizes, oh, it's my fault. Like I kind of led them to what they're doing now because they've realized that it's possible to tip the scales and basically take a hold of the positive forces and reign over the earth or wherever they want to reign over. And so let's move on to the next bit. So Thorn is back and he is transformed into what I would describe as the negative reverse flash. He is the new avatar of the negative speed force. He has boosted powers. He has a brand new black suit. I think the suit actually looks pretty damn cool. However, I think the cow actually isn't very good. It looks a bit awkward and that's because it's more of a helmet. Not generally a big fan of the helmet suits. However, I do like the upgrade and considering he's like the negative reverse slash, it's fitting that it's all in black and it's obviously very exciting to see new costumes, but he attacks everyone in Central City. He kills like a whole bunch of people absolutely instantly. He goes absolutely crazy with his red lightning, striking at everyone throughout the city, causing havoc and causing chaos whilst he is all powerful. And so meanwhile, Iris is still with Damien Dark and it's revealed that she's a survivor and that she hasn't reached her limit of her potential and that's why she can't die as of right now and that's why the time stone actually saved her 
and so she's going to reignite Barry and her spark, and she does that in a pretty cool scene where you get to see kind of like speed force energy go around her. And let's go back to Thorn and everything that's happening with him in Central City as he unleashes his new powers on everyone. And so Barry shows up and the rest of the team flash, obviously Bart and Nora and everyone, and Mina as well who is the new addition to the Flash family. So he actually is able to trick the Flash family into thinking that they got him. But it turns out that Barry struck Bart instead of Reverse Flash as part of Illusion. And so after this, he's able to snap the rest of them away. But at this point, as they face off against each other and it's in a very intense battle, the forces are able to return, the positive forces, thanks to what Cecile has been doing as well as what Barry's been doing by fighting off Reverse Flash. And basically, they go inside Barry and they make him an equal to Thorn. They supercharge him with his energy. It was a pretty cool scene. We could see Barry with various colors of lightning. Barry says, this is for Iris, and he goes ape shit on Thorn. Then Iris absolutely comes out of nowhere, shows up with the help of Jay Garrick after she returns and reunites with her dad. And so she's the one that's able to talk Barry down from his revenge quest that he's on because she realizes and everyone else realizes that he's destroying the city, he's doing more bad than good by trying to get revenge. And so in a strange turn of events, Barry sits down on the ground and basically sits in a meditation position as Thorn flies up into the sky with his new speed force energy as he calls upon more power and he draws from the negative speed force and the negative forces and the city can't handle this much destruction and everything is going crazy but luckily as Thorn literally unleashes a wave of energy across the city that is killing people and destroying buildings Barry is able to reverse everything, and that's all while sitting in his meditation position as he's able to tap into the forces and their full potential and override Thorn with too much energy. And so Thorn disappears and the universe resets itself, and that is pretty much it in regards to the final battle. And that setting position obviously recalls what he did in a previous episode, where he was able to see all the different places and all the different things in the future and everything. That's where we got the reference of Max Mercury, for instance. And so in the aftermath, it's explained that Barry's force particles are gone and that Thorn is also gone from the timeline. He is nowhere to be seen. And also Iris has lost her time sickness. So they actually wrap up most of the main stories this season. There is a couple of cliffhangers, especially in regards to what happens with Caitlyn, which we'll get to in a minute. But it's nice to have everything kind of back to normal in some way, with Barry back to his normal powers, Thorn being gone once again, and potentially not in this timeline. But there's always a chance that he returns again in the future because he is Eopard Thorn after all. But also, Iris has finally lost her time sickness, which is great for Iris because she has definitely been missing a lot this season. And so let's talk a bit about Mina. So Mina says if Team Flash ever needs a helping hand again, she'll be back and she would love to help out because obviously they helped her in some way, although her love, Eobard, was actually killed. They were actually able to stop his killer, which is good enough for her for now. And so surprisingly, Tinya turns to the Flash and she reunites with her mum thanks to Iris and Barry and that was quite a sweet moment. I was very surprised Tinya wasn't trying to rip Iris's head off due to what she did before. However, let's move on past that. And obviously that is maybe a story that we'll continue with in season nine with Tinya because she's a new character. But what I was gonna talk about is Caitlin. So we go back and we see Mark, he's sleeping. And then he finds out that there's been a chamber malfunction. And we've been suspecting, oh, maybe Caitlin is gonna you know, malfunction, something's gonna go wrong, she's gonna turn into frost, and they're gonna be one and the same like they used to be. And so it seems something along the lines of this is happening because Mark goes, who the hell are you? As he opens the chamber, obviously not re recognizing Caitlin or Frost. And so he's like, who the hell are you? And she's like, a friend. And that's what we get. I was 
so hoping to see who it actually was, what her appearance is actually like. So that was actually a really, really good cliffhanger. I can't wait to see what is actually going on with Caitlyn. Okay, so let's move on. The last couple of things, Barry and Iris have finally reunited. They have a nice West Allen moment. That is something that we've been missing in the last however many episodes. But the final scene is very interesting. So I just took a few notes about what I saw. It was very far, so I may have missed some stuff. And I will break this down in future videos sometime in the next few weeks or so. But what I saw in the lab as this kind of montage is going on at the end of the episode, you see 2049, you see the number 29. As the voiceover says that the negative forces will have to choose a new avatar, they will be ready for it, that being Team Flash of course, and that's as we get the reveal of a blue glowing item that is also flaming in some sort of lab. And so this in fact, if you guys know and are comic book readers, is the blue flame that is i believe what we're seeing on screen could be wrong but more likely than not this is them teasing cobalt blue for season nine now in the comics cobalt blue is actually malcolm thorne however in the tv show it's been speculated for a long time that if they were to do cobalt blue maybe they would do eddie thorne they would use rick cosnett but they would basically repurpose him in some way in order for him to become Cobalt Blue. And so I'll explain exactly what the Blue Flame does. So, the flame of Cobalt Blue's gem can steal the Flash's speed, the gem's sorcery can be used for nearly any magical effect, and it's normally handed down through the descendants of the Thorns. And if you guys didn't know, in the comics Malcolm Thorn is actually a thorn and was switched at birth with Barry, but it turns out he is actually the real twin brother of Barry, but by accident he ended up with the thorns. Now, I have no idea if they're actually going to do Malcolm Thorn. they can totally do their own twist on it, and that's why I bring up the Eddie Thorn theory, because it could definitely be Eddie, but I think it would be very interesting if it was Malcolm, but it was still Rick Cosnett, and it was just Eddie's twin brother that was long lost and that we haven't seen and that gives it a good excuse for him to be on the show and it makes sense that it would be a thorn because in the comics it's handed down throughout thorns and so yeah that pretty much does it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos and you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video, which was my Superman Lower Season 2 finale, so don't miss that. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.